What's up, YouTube? Poke Primer here. Pride and Rage deliver you our week six team builder for Fella. <coughs> this week we are taking on uh, Cassie, aka Cass Kingdra, and the Liverpool Lux Rays. Uh, her channel and anything else she wants me to link will be in the description below. Um, as for her team, uh, she's got a really, really, really decent team. Uh, the, the thing I like about her team the most is she has diversity when it comes to her Firewater Grass Core. And she has a Mon with, uh, multiple forms that could, uh, either one could be brought. And, uh, I need to be able to plan for both instead of just the one. So it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. It's going to be tough to beat, but, you know, hopefully, uh, with the squad that we built for this week, uh, we should be able to pull it off. But, uh, her team... Uh, consists of Mega Venusaur, Slow King, Meloetta, Mandibuzz, Miltank, Arcanine, Aromatisse, Flygon, Chinchino, Electivire, Walrein, and Heatran. Uh, so very, very, very strong team. Uh, you can see she has the two water types in Walrein and Slow King, so she can run either one of them, depending on if she wants a physically defensive, a physically bulky water type, or a specially bulky water type. I feel like against my team, uh, a specially bulky water type in the form of uh, Slow King would probably fit her needs most in this matchup, uh, just due to the fact that I have things like Volcanion and uh, Jinx and Jolteon on the team that uh, would typically give a uh, Walrein a hard time. Uh, she also has the uh, two different fire types in Heatran and... Uh, Arcanine, uh, depending on if she wants the uh, Intimidate or Flash Fire support from the Arcanine, uh, which is which would be risky because I do have Volcanion, who is a part Water type as well. So uh, typically she wouldn't. I don't think she would want to try to run Flash Fire. She'd probably run Intimidate uh, more often than not. Uh, I probably would bring Heatran. In all honesty, I would think I think she might bring uh, especially defensive Heatran potentially to counter me. Uh, some of my mons uh, would probably be the best way for her to counter, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Scarf Heatran would also do very well against my team, I believe, so those are options that she might bring that I need to be wary of. I also need to watch for potential Air Balloon because I do have uh, two, two or three ground type moves throughout the team that uh, she could potentially dodge with that. Uh, she's got a Defogger. A Defog support in the ways of Flygon and Mandibuzz. More likely Mandibuzz. Then Flygon in this case, just due to the fact that Flygon has a very, very good offensive presence against my team. Uh, it can do a lot of work uh, with its speed and everything. It can, it can do some good things. So I don't predict her to bring that as a defogger. So I would say if she does bring a defogger, it would be Mandibuzz uh, 100%. But we have a way of dealing with Mandibuzz uh, perfectly. Um, she has Cleric support in the Meltank and the... Uh, Aromatisse, we also have to be very cautious of the Meltank attempting to set up, because that could be a huge problem if, the, if her Meltank starts getting curses up, we won't really have anything to deal with it. Uh, anything too amazing to deal with it with, honestly. Uh, which kind of scary, in my opinion. I, it's really, really kind of scary. Also, uh, Meloetta is a huge, huge, huge problem because of the fact that it can change form. Uh, I know there's been other leagues that I've been in where they counted them separately, where if you drafted Meloetta Pirouette, you have to run Relic Song every week on your Meloetta, and your opponent just knew that was coming. Well, this league's different because you don't have that notion. You can run either regular Meloetta, you know, the special attacking, specially bulky, uh, normal psychic type variant, or you can run it with Relic Song and get the fast, hard-hitting... Uh, physical, uh, normal fighting pirouette variant. Uh, it's very, very, so it's very, very versatile uh, in this type of format, which is really, really dangerous uh, to face because uh, the big difference is speed. Uh, regular Meloetta is only base 90, while Meloetta pirouette's base 128, which is insane. Uh, it's almost faster than my entire team, which is nuts. So I have to, I had to be really, really. Uh, smart in preparing and how to f handle that uh, monster of a mon. Um, 
yeah, so that's good. That, that's kind of what I'm where I'm at right now. Um, Electivire is there as well. Uh, she's two volt switch immunities, uh, which could be kind of a pain in the butt. And then there's also obviously Mega Venusaur as the elephant in the room. Uh, Mega Venusaur is just one of the best Megas in this format and in Pokemon period. Uh, it's just so hard to take down. So few things can actually do it. So hopefully uh, with the squad that we are rocking this week, uh, we can uh, surmount those odds and take it out. And uh, hopefully pull out a, a W in our favor. Uh, so we're going to go into this right now. Uh, we're going to go into the squad that we're bringing. The first Mon we're going to bring against her team is the one Ice type that a Mega Venusaur cannot switch in on. And that is our Choice Scarf Jinx here. Kardashian the Jinx. Uh, rocking the Choice Scarf with the Dry Skin ability. Dry Skin is there because obviously, A, I'm not going to stay in on any Fire types or any Fire type attacks. I'm, I'm not staying in on Heatran. I'm not staying in on... Uh, Arcanine. Well, the Scarf guarantees me that I will outspeed both of them. Uh, I am packing Hidden Power Ground for the Heatran. I believe I didn't actually run the Calc. I didn't actually run the Calc, to be totally honest. I didn't run the Calc. Jinx, Choice Scarf, Heatran. Let's go Specially Defensive Set. Hidden... Power ground. Ugh. It does about half of its specially. It's a little under half of its specially defensive. But that's fine, actually. That's fine because if I can catch it on a switch, that'd be Gucci. How much does Focus Blast do? Focus Blast does about the same. So either way, we have a chance to kill it with HP ground if it's fully specially defensive. Uh, we have a chance to 2 KO it if we can catch it on a switch in, which uh, Heatran pretty much switches in on the Jinx 25,000% of the time. So uh, we can fire off the HP ground, uh, probably fire off Focus Blast first just to see if it actually is Air Balloon set. Because if it's an Air Balloon set, then HP ground obviously will miss and then we'll be locked in and we'll be kind of screwed and something has to take a Lava Plume or something like that. And I don't want to deal with that, so we're going to go ahead and we're probably going to click Focus Blast more often than not. But, um, if we determine that it's not Air Balloon, uh, then we will just click HP Ground and fuck that thing up. So, that's kind of the goal there. Uh, Ice Beam, Psy Shock, Focus Blast, and Hidden Power Ground is just good coverage overall for my opponent's team this week. Psy Shock, obviously, is just going to absolutely decimate the Mega Venusaur, and will also hurt the Meloetta a lot uh, if it is pure wet form. Uh, that's that's really really huge to note. Uh, Psy Shock and Focus Blast can both hit the Pirouette Meloetta really really hard. Uh, that's the reason I decided to run the thing Scarfed in the long run. Uh, I was originally going to run it just Focus Sash or something along those lines uh, to potentially handle uh, Flygon, but um, I determined that uh, being able to outspeed Chinchino, which I don't figure would be Scarfed uh, because of its speed, typically uh, people would run it Banded. Because it doesn't necessarily need a scarf, although I do have Jolteon, so scarfing it might be a thing to try and catch me off guard. But uh, I did plan around that potential uh, scenario. Uh, the thing I know for a fact won't be scarfed is the Meloetta. Uh, the way I look at it is, uh, Meloetta is, if it's pirouette, it will not be scarfed. Just for the simple fact that... Uh, Pure Wet Meloetta requires Relic Song to transform, and you don't want to scarf yourself in a Relic Song because then you're just, I believe it just transforms you back and forth, and uh, that's just kind of silly. I mean, it has a chance to put the opponent to sleep, but at the same time, you don't want to continuously uh, pray for the hacks of getting sleep on your opponent with that move. Watch, that's going to be something that happens in the battle if she brings Pure Wet Meloetta, but... Regardless of that, it needs the ability to then switch it, switch up its uh, offenses to its physically offensive move pool that it is carrying. So, um, I know for a fact it won't be Scarfed, potential Life Orb. But uh, that gives me the opportunity to hit it with a Psy Shock and outspeed it with the Scarf. The Scarf will also allow me to outspeed uh, her base 95 mons, with, uh, which are Arcanine and Electivire. Speed tie with them if it's Scarfed. Uh, if she doesn't scarf the fly on, 
Then we will outspeed that as well and hit that thing with an ice beam. You know, basically, just everything on our team just doesn't appreciate uh, a lot of what we do. Uh, ice beam for the Mandibuzz, Focus Blast for the Mel Tank. Uh, we have Focus Blast for the Chinchino, HP Ground for the Electivire, Arcanine, and Heatran. Focus Blast for the Wall Rain. There's a lot of things on her team that just don't appreciate this Jinx's move pool. And a lot of times, if I can click the right move, uh, we're going to get huge super factor damage off on something. And then uh, she's going to have to have either another Mon take that hit as well, try to get a Mon in that will take the hit better, or uh, stack whatever Mon is that's in there off. Because uh, with this coverage, we pretty much have super factor damage on everything on our team, barring the uh, Slow King. Uh, or regular Meloetta, obviously. You can't hit regular Meloetta super effectively, but that's okay. Because we outspeed it anyway. So, we'll, we'll, we have other things to handle regular Meloetta if we determine that that's the set she's running. But uh, the next mod we're bringing is going to be our old faithful Volcanion. Still trying to make this thing kick some ass. And this week should be no different. Uh, Volcanion is rocking an Assault Vest once again. Um, I know I've been running Assault Vest pretty standardly in this league. And I understand that that's not typically a good thing to do, but uh, just with this diverse move pool and the natural bulk that Volcanion already has, uh, with its base 120 defenses, uh, just the Assault Vest adds to that so nicely and allows Volcanion to just be one of the greatest bulky offensive mons uh, in this format right now. Uh, so we have 84 speed EVs. Uh, 84 speed will allow us to outspeed min speed, base 80, so we'll be outspeeding things like Mandibuzz and Mega Venusaur. Uh, which is really, really, really nice. I originally only invested enough to outspeed min speed Heatran if she decided to bring a specially defensive variant, but I decided a little extra speed never hurt to outspeed things like Mega Venusaur and Mandibuzz, so I could at least hit them with some good, super, uh, some good damage. We got 168 HP to add that extra bulk for the Assault Vest, and we're obviously going to be running max special attack with a modest nature. Uh, we're not running Fire Stab this week. Uh, she has like zero f fire weaknesses at all, and she has so many mods with thick fat, you know, Wall Rain, uh, Wall Rain, uh, Meltank, and Mega Venusaur all have thick fat. Uh, Slow King heavily resists it. Um. Arcanine has flash fire potential. Believe Heatran has flash fire as well. I'm not sure. Does Heatran have flash? Yeah, Heatran does have flash fire. Yeah, there's so there's just no reason to actually bring a uh, fire type move this week. It just kind of doesn't fit. Uh, I wouldn't see many instances where I would just fire. I would say, oh well, let me just fire off flamethrower or fire blast. That's the safest play because there's so many things that switch in directly on a fire blast and do like take nothing from it. So we're gonna be rocking steam eruption. It's gonna that's gonna be there to hit the Arcanine and the Heatran. Uh, if the Heatran outspeeds us, it's not a big deal. Uh, we have the assault vest. We can eat in Earth Power uh, if that's if that's what it decides to go for. Because any of it, either of its stab moves won't do shit to me. Uh, so it would have to go for an Earth Power against us. And obviously a steam eruption would blow it the fuck back. Uh, we also have uh, Focus Blast. Uh, she has a huge fighting weakness on her team. Uh, Pure White Meloetta. Obviously, uh, Meltank. Uh, Heatran, Chinchino. And Wall Rain. All weak to fighting. So, if I can hit one of those with a Focus Blast from a max special attack, modest uh, Volcanion, it's going to hurt a lot of things. Uh, HP Ice, uh, they're specifically for the Flygon. We can take a, an Earthquake from a Flygon, I believe. Let's look at that calc real quick. Okay, now with 168 HP. Against the Flygon. Uh, yeah, it is 168. There we go, that's better. Alright, so if it is a Scarfed Jolly Flygon, uh, we only take 68 
I don't even have to be modest in order to kill it with an HP ice, but I will be. So there's that. Um, if it's adamant, we still live the earthquake. If it is choice banded, we don't. If it if it is choice banded, flying on, then we don't uh, live the earthquake, which kind of sucks. But uh, if we can get in there on a potential uh, outrage or something that we know we can, that we know you know it's going to be going for a little bit. If they just, if she decides to run outrage, uh, we can just sit in front. We can just go out, sit in front of it, and uh, click HP ice and kill it off, which would be fantastic for us. And the last move we are running is Sludge Wave. Uh, Sludge Wave is there specifically so that we have something for the Aromatisse. This thing walls Aromatisse entirely uh, on the offensive end. It can't do anything to us offensively. Uh, it would have to potentially just spread status to us. At that point, we outspeed it already. So a Sludge Wave will do a large amount of damage to it. Let's go Sludge Wave. Aromatisse. If it is a physically defensive Aromatisse variant, it will two it will two shot every single time. If it is a let's say if it's specially defensive, uh, it's a three A KO potential two A KO, uh, three A KO after leftovers. But uh, again, uh, if you you just see right there the the negligible damage that a Moonblast would do. Uh, it would not be able to survive very long against us, and we'd also have the chance to potentially get the poison, which will cause it to potentially waste a turn going for aromatherapy. So that would be a very, very good situation for us. Not so good for Cassie, but again, you know, you kind of you don't pray for the hacks, but the hacks are always there. You kind of hope that they happen. That's why you run certain moves over others. That's why I run Steam Eruption over Hydro Pump because of the simple fact that I can get burns. You know, stuff like that. The next mod we're bringing is our Defogging Mandibuzz Counter. And uh, it's Tuffles the Wigglytuff holding the leftovers with the competitive ability. And for those who don't know, competitive uh, raises your special attack by two stages if any of your stats is lowered by the opponent. So, for example, if, uh, Mandibu if I can get Mandibuzz to go for Defog, uh, well, my opponent will see immediately that I'm not Frisk, which is kind of, which is interesting, which is good. Good for them, even better for me. I can freely set up rocks in front of Mandibuzz with Tuffles, because deep down she knows that Tuffles gets competitive, and you don't want to give a competitive boost to a Pokemon, so you don't just freely click Defog. And the cool part about it is... Neither of her potential defoggers can click defog in front of me because I have this thing that could switch in on defog or sit in front of it and cause it to not be able to defog and then I can dazzle and gleam both of them to the next dimension. If they do defog then I get plus two special attack. I'm doubling that. That's 400. That's 414 special attack right there. That's going to be a painful dazzling gleam. Even with even without investment, even without any form of investment at all, plus two, Dazzling Gleam, Mandibuzz. 66 to 78%. Destroys it, does so much damage. Flygon. Oko's it. Well, let's actually just put my moveset on there. There's Thunderbolt. Focus Blast. If I can get that plus two, if I can get that plus two, let's just look at some of these things. Slow King. Say specially defensive. Thunderbolt does. It's a three AKO. Can't can't uh, beat us one v one. If she decides to run a physically defensive variant, Say she runs a max defense bold one, just for overall defensibility. We two shot it with Thunderbolt, so it depends on what kind of spread she runs on her slow king. But we either two shot or three shot it, and it can't really do shit back to us. Meloetta. Hmm. 
Meloetta, depending on the set that she decides to run, Focus Blast or Dazzling Gleam, destroy it. Regular Meloetta obviously is going to eat the hit a lot better. Regular Meloetta eats our hits a lot better and would beat us, but that's, you know, if she brings regular Meloetta over uh, the Pirouette. Mel Tank, very specially bulky Mon. Two shot by Focus Blast. We might, we don't have to speed it, but at the end of the day, we don't need to. Because we do way more to that thing than it does to us. <clears throat> Arcanine, just for the shit of it. <clears throat> and Arcanine, if it's Arcanine, now that I think about it, if it's a defensive Arcanine, it can't switch in on us either because of the Intimidate. Because then we'll get our attack lowered, but then we'll also get two more stages of special attack, which would make us even more deadly. So there's that. Aromatisse can't safely fire uh, Moonblast at us, because even if we drop one stage of special attack, we'll gain two more back. So, there's so many ways that... There's just so many ways that Wigglytuff just shuts down a lot of mons on my opponent's team. Chinchino. Chinchino, even with a... Even if it was Adamant Banded Tail Slap... Cannot oh cannot take us out with five hits, and a focus blast absolutely ends its life. Electivire cannot one shot us. Dazzling gleam two shots it. Wall rain. Pretty sure we're about to see a focus blast two shot. There we go. Thunderbolt also does the work. And then we have Heatran. Especially defensive Heatran is two shot by Focus Blast. A Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon is a two shot on us, so that's something we're going to have to be careful of. Obviously, she's probably going to be packing the Flash Cannon for us. But at the end of the day, uh, I can feel pretty safe uh, that Tuffles if I can get that competitive boost, is going to put in insane amounts of work against my opponent. Uh, she just doesn't really have too much to slow me down or stop me. The only things that can really completely stop me are Mega Venusaur, Meloetta, and <coughs> Heatran, essentially. Uh, which is really, really good for me, not so good for Cassie, so... I'm happy with this Tuffle set. This makes me really happy. I get free rocks up uh, against my opponent uh, pretty much any time with this thing, which is great. And as long as I can keep it alive, they cannot defog. Uh, that's also why I decided to go uh, max defense bold uh, for my defenses, because uh, brave Bir so we can take Brave Birds or Foul Plays from... Uh, whatchamacallit... Um, Mandibuzz is better. That's what that was the plan here. I'm actually gonna zero out your attack IVs. Just for that purpose. I didn't think about doing that until now, but yeah, we're gonna do that. Next mom we're gonna be having on the squad is gonna be our specially defensive Drapion. Get over here. Rocking the black sludge with the battle armor ability. Pretty, pretty great. Pretty great ability in my opinion. My personal, personal opinion. Uh, such a great mod in general. Uh, especially defensive Drapion. It completely walls Mega Venusaur in its entirety. Uh, it can wall Slow King, walls Meloetta, non Pirouette, walls. Uh, walls Mandibuzz for the most part because we're very, very physically bulky. Uh, we can wall. Uh, Aromatis in its entirety, we pretty much completely shut it down. Uh, we wall. Uh, Chinchino can't do all that much to us. Uh, Electivire, depending on the set, really can't do too, too much to us. Besides Earthquake. Uh, wall Rain can't do shit to us, really at all. And uh, Heatran can't do anything to us besides attempted Earth Powers, and that's why we're specially defensive. Uh, move set. We got knockoff, poison jab, earthquake, and rock slide. Uh, this is typically a situation where I would, 
where I wish I would have run an assault vest, but at the same time, uh, I didn't really need to. I don't want to have two assault vest users on the team, spoiler alert. I actually don't have two assault vest users on the team, I just realized that. What was I thinking about earlier? Never mind, that was a different team. I didn't want to run two assault vest users, so is what we're going with. Uh, the knockoff poison jab, earthquake, rock slide, fantastic move set to handle her team. Uh, knockoff uh, obliterates the slow king and the regular Meloetta. Uh, this is the first time we actually have something that completely just counters the regular Meloetta 100%, because uh, it cannot do all that much to us and has to switch out and we get a free knockoff off. Uh, poison jab is there for the aromatis in its entirety. Uh, we can sit in front of Romatis for hours and just click Poison Jab. Uh, Earthquake is there for the Arcanine and the Heatran, uh, also for the Electivire. And uh, Rock Slide is there for the uh, Rock Slide is there for the uh, Mandibuzz and the uh, the Walrein, I believe, was the other mod I wanted Rock Slide for. Uh, kind of crappy part is I don't have anything on this set to hit. Um. To super effectively hit uh, Mega Venusaur, but uh, that's just what Drapion's move pool is. Uh, we can wall it, maybe stall it a little bit, uh, get it to waste a few synthesis or something like that, uh, which would be really, really nice because I'm actually going to take this four out of here, put that four in there, uh, specifically so that we can, if uh, min speed. Uh, base 95s, we will outspeed them every time. Uh, I like the sound of that. So, yeah. So, yeah. There's that. Very, very uh, simple set for Drapion this week, but I feel like it'll put in a lot of work. Drapion uh, usually typically gives my opponents a lot, of, a lot of issues, a lot of hard times, so hopefully this week will be no different. The next set we're running is probably a set that I'm most proud of. It doesn't give us much longevity, but it does provide us with a little bit of surprise factor and something my opponent needs to uh, prepare for. And that is a Quick Feet Jolteon. Yes, you heard me. Quick Feet Jolteon. Now, why would I be running Quick Feet? Because of Meloetta. But why Quick Feet? You outspeed it naturally. Well, <clears throat> listen. And now I'm actually going to edit my spread live. Um, I'm actually going to bring your speed down to 362. I have to go gonna stay at that HP level and then we're gonna give you eight and a spit F because why not all right so this is gonna be the final 100% final set for our um with Jolteon um, the reason I had the speed like it was before is because that is how much I needed to outspeed uh, Meloetta Pirouette I one point but I thought about it and uh, with quick feet we don't need to do that because it won't be scarfed if it's a Meloetta Pirouette it will not be scarfed so at that point we can uh, guarantee that we outspeed it uh, with the quick feet. Uh, so now we are at the point where we will 100% outspeed everything on our opponent's team, guaranteed, including scarfers. Because once that quick feet goes up, we get that 1.5 times boost. It's like we have a choice scarf, but we don't have to. Uh, <clears throat> we don't have to. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we don't have to lock ourselves into something. You know, if, if so, a situation comes in where, oh shit, Flygon switched in on a potential Volt switch. Boom, HP Ice, or boom, we're out of there. You know, or we can just go for... Uh, something switches in on one of our moves, and we have another move on our move set that deals with it slightly better. 
boom, switch off to that move. There we go. You know, it it kind of sucks because it, it takes away uh, own boy's uh, longevity, but at the same time, uh, it allows uh, Jolteon to a uh, put the surprise factor in my opponent. They won't be expecting a flame orb quick feet Jolteon by any means. I don't think any uh, anyone would ever be expecting that. And uh, it allows us to outspeed all of the potential Scarfers, Flygon, Chinchino, and all of those. Uh, we outspeed all of them 100% of the time once we're burned. Uh, so we can just freely Volt Switch or HP Ice them or Signal Beam them. Uh, the Signal Beam is there just because I didn't have anything to hit Meloetta and Slowking super effectively. And uh, I wanted something to hit both of them. I mean, if, if the only that's one of the downsides I see in... Jolteon is just the simple fact that its move pool isn't all that great. It doesn't really have all that much going for it in terms of move pool. Actually, what do I lose by running Toxic? A little bit because Meltank can just uh, knock it off. Never mind. Yeah, with this spread, uh, it's going to be really, really good. Uh, the 112 HP allows us to bulk hits, and uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, very, very, very crazy set for Jolteon this week, but I really think it's going to put in a lot of work. Uh, no one's going to ever see it coming, and at this point in the season, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm far enough behind in my side of the conference that uh, I'm out of the playoff race. Uh, a lot of very specific things need to happen. A lot of people need to start losing. And uh, I need to just keep winning. And I don't see that necessarily happening. And uh, don't get me wrong, I don't plan on losing every match, but... I don't see myself winning every match, if that, if that makes sense. If, if that makes sense to you guys, but uh... At this point, I want to try to, to do a couple of fun things uh, for the rest of the season. Uh, you know, come back season two potentially better than before, and potentially do my very very best to uh, draft. I would say a slightly better team. I, I wouldn't say my team's bad, but uh, my team doesn't handle a lot of things, uh, a lot of very common things in this format. That uh, definitely you need to have things handled for, so I definitely need to really sit down for next season and plan a lot better for the draft. But this is the team that we have now, and we're going to make the very, very best of it. Uh, we have one other free agent swap, I believe, for this season, and I think we're going to be making that. I think we made that actually uh, at the very, very end of last week, so we should have that mod for next week. So hopefully that'll, uh, that'll pan out nicely for us. And, uh, yeah. That's enough of that. Uh, last mon we have is going to be our Onisan, our Latios. And this is another set case where we're actually going to take advantage of its offensive presence. Uh, we're rocking 176 speed with a Timinature. Uh, this speed investment allows us to outspeed all of his base 100s, uh, like Meltank and uh, Flygon, 100% of the time. Uh, max special attack, obviously, to make our choice specs hit that much harder. Uh, the only thing I really fear is knockoff from Mellow P and U-turn uh, or knockoff from Chinchino. That's the only thing I really fear with this spread. Uh, 80 HP, there for a little bit of bulk. Uh, Draco Meteor, Psyshock, Thunderbolt, and HP Ground are the move, is the move set. Really just has good coverage overall for my opponent's team. Uh, even though she only has one Dragon Weakness, tell me what switches in besides Aromatis. Tell me what really switches in on a Choice Specs Draco Meteor from a Latios. Heatran? Yeah, okay. Heatran switches in, that's right. You're right, you're right. I have HP ground. I can catch it on a switch in. Boom. Choice specs HP ground. You're fucking gone. You're absolutely gone. Off this earth.
Uh, Mega Venusaur? Potentially? No, not really. Uh, the reason I'm running Choice Specs is I want the punching power this week. Uh, I, I need the absolute punching power that this thing provides. If she doesn't bring a Romatisse, I can easily just go in and after he trans dead, just click Draco. And something has to either, whatever's in front of me has to take a Draco, or whatever switches in has to take a Draco. From a Latios. That is Choice Specs. That's gonna hurt. A lot. Like, nothing really wants to take it. So, there's that. So, that's kind of the team we're going to be bringing this week. I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. Uh, again, you know, at this point, I'm pretty sure we don't have a chance of making playoffs. But, <clears throat> if we can... You know, I'd love to give it a shot and finish out the season strong. Uh, we have a lot of matches coming up against people we've already faced. So it's going to be a battle of rematches. So beating the same person twice is really difficult. So hopefully we can actually uh, do that uh, or beat somebody that we didn't beat before. That'd be nice too. Uh, I know we face Jazzy again later in the season. Uh, we face Toby again, I believe, next week, week 7, uh, so we can get our revenge there. Uh, we face Waffles again, I believe, week 8 or 9, something like that. But uh, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be insane. It's going to be a great time. I'm having fun with this league, and that's pretty much what I, uh, I wanted to join this league to do is to have fun with some new people, uh, make some, you know, new friends, stuff like that. And it's been good, so I'm going to stop rambling and finish up this video. If you guys have enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like down below, and if you guys are rooting for us in our match against the Liverpool Lux Rays, coached by Cass Kingdra, whose link will be in the description below, please make sure to subscribe and follow us so that you can see that match take place. I'm going to get out of here, guys. Until next time, I'm Poke Primer, signing off.